Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai Bahasham, Rachahakwadash. Double honors to the apostles, the elders at Great Millstone who rule well. And as always, we give peace and salutations unto the elect. And I wanted to do a uh, response to this video uploaded by uh, the beloved brother Karataza, GMS Vegas Sit Downs 144K is his site. All right, make sure that you uh, subscribe to the brother's page and make sure that you are constantly edified. All right, get this word why it is hot. All right, they're hiding comments. Um, and as you can see, the, the powers that be are honing in on making it illegal to preach this word, which is also biblical prophecy. All right, and we can't be offended at prophecy. So you're going to start to see um, more of these pages disappear. All right, but while the word is out, all right, you should be building yourselves up so that you can be rooted in the understanding which the scriptures say, all right, um, knowledge and wisdom, all right, shall be the stability of your times, all right, meaning you're going to be stable as this world tries to make you feel guilty, all right, for the belief on the true doctrine and not the dogma and, and, and madness that has controlled the narrative for years, all right, dealing with Christianity now. In this video, this is a response, my question to Hebrew Israelites, who had fallen from heaven, a white man? All right, we're going to go ahead and play the uh, the video and get some edification because Christians run around with this false narrative that Satan, all right, who was over the music program in heaven, was kicked out of heaven, okay, uh, you know, as if in the heavens... You know, the Heavenly Father isn't in control, all right? Satan himself is under the direct orders of the Most High. As the Lord tells you himself, Isaiah, the 45th chapter, in the seventh verse, I form the light, I create darkness, I make peace, and create evil. I, the Lord, Yahweh, do all these things, all right? And a false balance is an abomination, so we couldn't know good without knowing or having seen evil okay and vice versa okay satan and everything in the heavens are under the direct control and orders of the most high that's why he's omnipotent if satan's in the heaven all right on his own agenda then that doesn't make the most high omnipotent or omnipotent all right there's nothing that is not under his control all right but how movies usually play out even in a carnal sense all right there's there's good and there's evil and that's what makes the movie you know uh, uh interesting well for evil to be done on earth all right you had satan which just means adversary all right and there's a seed of satan on the planet earth when we get second thessalonians the second chapter all right that would be revealed in the latter days and that's linked to esau edom all right, if you follow the narrative of the Bible. However, let's go ahead and listen to this and get some edification. And Lord willing, you brothers and sisters that watch are edified. I'm preparing myself like a man. Yeah. So the Hebrew Israelite want to prepare himself as a man and answer me. Yeah. Uh, the question is, if it's a white man fall from heaven. Oh, So you heard him, all right, and as he goes into his sermon, because we are uh, teaching, you know, that Satan, all right, has a seed on the earth, all right, and that's proven in the Holy Scriptures as we just quoted, okay, Second Thessalonians, the second chapter, okay, because this book has to, you know, it's line upon line and precept upon precept, okay, this is, uh, Second Thessalonians chapter 2 and 8 and then shall that wicked be revealed whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming all right even him whose coming is after the working of Satan so there's a particular man which is synonymous with a nation of people Esau Edom 
all right, whose coming is to do the working of Satan on the earth with all power and signs and lying wonders. This, this is the reason of his coming is to do the working of Satan in the earth. You had to have that done in the earth. All right. As the scriptures say, the earth would be given into the hand of the wicked and he will forward himself based upon lies, pseudoscience and all manner of uh, uh, rebelling and being a, an adversary to what's true. Now we're living in a time where what's true is coming out and swallowing up all of his lies. Therefore, he's moving with wrath. All right. To try to uh, cut off the word and establish his new world order. Now, when you go to Isaiah, the 14th chapter. OK, and we're going to read this. uh scripture okay isaiah the 14th chapter in the 12th verse okay which is the uh the, <laughs> a lot of dogma and madness surrounds this okay isaiah 14 and 12 how art thou fallen from heaven o lucifer son of the morning how art thou cut down to the ground which didst weaken the nations all right now let's look up this word weaken all right Weaken the nations, okay? The word for weaken. All right, and then you have to take the whole chapter into context as well to understand why it says that, all right? Chalash is the word, all right? To be weak, to be to to be prostrate, meaning to, to bow to him, all right? Through the sword, okay? He weakened the nations, all right? As the scriptures say, he, he, he coveted fields. He detached people from their heritage, okay? He oppressed people's heritage, okay? He, he, he removed landmarks. He did all of these things, which did what? Weaken the nations, okay? He spread all types of LGBT, uh, 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 you know, propaganda, all right, over in nations where that's not even accepted, you know, feminism, He's weakened the nations, man, which through him confusing every damn body, he's been able to have them. He's been able to disable them. And now they're prostrate, meaning they're in a position of servitude. They, they, their heads are down, bowing to him in his way, in his lies. OK, even on who the true uh, uh, biblical nations are, they've been covered up with pseudoscience, lies. OK, then the sword, all of these wars, all of this, these chemicals, all of this propaganda that he's been able to spread. It's weakened the nations, man. Okay, so when you get this, that word Lucifer, okay, which bugs a lot of people out, okay, because Christians, they, like I said, they run around they, and you, you get this picture of Satan in the heavens playing the piano, just being a demon with a wave cap on, you know, uh, rebelling, you know, causing all of the other angels to want to rebel against the most high. And then him getting evicted out of heaven and falling down. No, that's not what this is talking about. And we're going to prove that this is speaking of Esau, Edom falling from his rulership. The word for light bear is Hayalal, okay? Or the word for uh, uh, Lucifer is Hayalal, which means what? Light bear, shining one, the morning star, okay? Lucifer of the king of Babylon and Satan and all scholars... <laughs> when you go to uh, ancient documents and concordances, understood, okay, that this was speaking of the king of Babylon in context of this chapter. Okay, so this is the illustrated dictionary and concordance of the Bible. It's a very good uh, addition uh, to studies. Um, and we're just going to go to Lucifer, all right, to show you that the scholars always understood that Lucifer was a man, okay? Now, it says Lucifer, okay? Bear of the light, the planet Venus at dawn, okay? <clears throat> in some Bible translations, the name used in Isaiah 14, all right? The 12th chapter, how are you fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? Originally meaning the shiny one referred to the king of Babylon. Okay. Originally it referred to the king of Babylon as we're showing you that that's what it's talking about in this chapter. Okay. In the third century AD, the saying of Yahweh Shai, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. 
all right? Um, Luke 10 and 18 was connected to Isaiah 14 and 12. And Lucifer, all right, was accepted as the same name for Satan before his fall. All right, and um, as we know in the scriptures, the devil is tied to someone who can throw you into prison, Revelation, the second chapter. Um, you know, uh, there's there's a, a man of sin who would be revealed in the latter days that will be directly uh, placed upon the earth to do the bidding and will of Satan. That's Second Thessalonians, the second chapter. All right. So what Yahweh is referring to is, is exactly what the prophecy said, the fall of uh, Satan. Uh, and his children in the kingdom that they will rule in the latter days, which is Babylon the Great. Okay, so what's up with Christians? Okay, Christians, uh, as we're telling you, they, they operate off of uh, dogma, fables. And the scriptures tell us to not follow all of these wicked fables, man. So there you have it. Scholars know. It originally, it's Isaiah, the 14th chapter is referring to the king of Babylon. It's clear as day. I mean, the, the, reading the chapter itself gives you all that you need, you know. OK, and we know that even today they call themselves what? The Illuminati, which means the bearers of the light. OK, they they they've covered the true light and replaced it with a false light, which is really darkness. But they have the ability to make it look like light. And as you follow it, you destroy yourself because the true shining star, the, the, true, the true light is through Yahweh Shai. He himself, okay, in uh, Revelation, the uh, 22nd chapter, okay, he himself in Revelation, the 22nd chapter, tells you what? In the 16th verse, I, Yahweh Shai, have sent my angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and offspring of David and the bright and morning star. All right. This is the high priest. All right. On the right hand side of the most high. Well, Satan, he's the adversary to that uh, uh, high priest on the, on the right hand side. OK, he's adverse to the children of the most high on the earth. So his seed on the earth, Satan's children they would uh, uh, deem to replace the true light with their light. And this is what's happening here on the planet Earth at this very moment. As a matter of fact, let's get Job the 10th chapter. And then we'll just break it down. It's very simple. All right. Uh, Job the 10th chapter in the 21st verse says, Before I go whence I shall not return even to the land of darkness and the shadow of death. A land of darkness as darkness itself and of the shadow of death without any order where the light is as darkness. All right. And the, and the scriptures say this is the condemnation that light, true light is coming to the world through this preaching, us preaching Yahweh Shai. But men hate light because they love darkness, man. The God of this world have blinded their eyes. OK, and, and, and shut off their minds from hearing the true uh, will of the most high God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. So the light here in this shadow of death, okay, this land of the shadow of death, light is as darkness, man. So the true light is covered up and they present this, this, this fake false light, okay, and call themselves the chosen. They call themselves the ones who have the light. And that's Satan, okay, and his seeds agenda, okay? So when you go to this chapter, People see the word falling from heaven and they just bug out, right? So before we get the understanding in this chapter, let's go to another scripture that deals with someone falling from heaven. And tell me, is this talking about the Israelites being kicked out of heaven? This is Lamentations 2 and 1. How have the Lord covered the daughter of Zion with a cloud in his anger? Okay. And cast down from heaven unto the earth the beauty of Israel all right and what happened in this time the Babylonians rolled on Israel man okay and you had particular kings that sat on the throne of David but after Josiah all right pretty much everything just got twisted and all messed up and distorted okay so Israel was cast down from heaven meaning their glory 
Okay, that's why Babylon the Great is being told to sit in the dust. There is no more throne. So being cast down from heaven, meaning, all right, it says, and remembered not his footstool in the day of his anger. The Lord have swallowed up the, inha the habitations of Jacob. He took down our temple. Okay, he took down our temple. So it, it's, it's synonymous with us, okay, being cast down from heaven unto the earth. We're sitting in the dust. All right, now we're shaking that dust off. All right, but we're sitting in the dust, okay, in the Lord, because of the Lord's anger, we're cast down from heaven. That does not mean the Israelites were kicked out of actual heaven and fell onto the earth. No, this is symbolic, man. We don't follow dogma. Now, let's look up the word dogma, all right, and fables, <laughs> all right, uh, uh, cunningly devised fables, man. Okay, all of this crap that's tied to idol worship. Okay, dogma, <laughs> okay, it says a, a principle or set principle laid down by an authority as incontrovertibly true. And that's what the Christian church and all of these particular uh, uh, false philosophies have, have laid down. And that's become the standard of what people believe that Satan was, was literally kicked out of heaven. Now, the, the question is when? Because in the book of Job, okay, he, he, he's definitely up there and the Lord has given him orders. So at what point did he get kicked out? Now, when you go to this chapter leading up to the 12th verse, it gives you clear understanding of who it's talking about. Okay, we're just going to read through it real quick and just get the understanding, man. Uh, Isaiah 14 and 1. Israel's taunt, all right? This is speaking of the Lord having mercy on Jacob. All right, now in the scriptures, what has to happen in order for the Lord to set up the kingdom of heaven? All you have to do is go to Revelation, the 18th chapter, really quick. Revelation, the 18th chapter, Babylon has to fall, okay? <laughs> and when Babylon falls, uh, Revelation 18 and 20, rejoice over her, thou heaven, and ye holy apostles and prophets, for God have avenged you on her. And a mighty angel took up a, a stone like a great millstone and cast it into the sea, saying, Thus with violence shall that great city Babylon be thrown down and shall be found no more at all. Okay? When you go to the very next chapter, okay, uh, Revelation 19 and 1, And after these things I heard a great voice of much people in heaven saying, Hallelujah, salvation and glory and honor and power unto the Lord our God. For true and righteous are his judgments, for he have judged the great whore, which did corrupt the earth with her fornication. And who's that great whore? Babylon the great. And hath avenged the blood of the servants at her hand. Okay? So we know Babylon has to fall in order for the kingdom of heaven to be set up. We also know Esau is the end of the world and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. So Isaiah 14 and 1, For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob, and he will yet choose Israel and set them in their own land, all right? And the strangers shall be joined with them, all right? And you have the 144, and you're going to have the large multitude, okay? It says, and the, one, the large multitude are likened unto the strangers, all right? Because they're going to get their inheritance, all right, um, through Yahawashai in the 144, okay? And they're going to be set up. All right, that's the remnant, the 144 and a large multitude. It says, and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob, okay? And the people shall take them, meaning our slaves, and bring them to their place. And the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of the Lord for servants and handmaids. And they shall take them captives whose captives they were, and they shall rule over their oppressors, right? <laughs> that's what's going to happen. All right, we're, we're not, uh, uh, you know, Christianity has done a great job of when you read stuff like this, either they'll say it's already done away with, this, this has already happened, or they'll just act like it doesn't, it doesn't mean anything. And what, what, a, what a statement like the Old Testament has done away with. Okay? And it shall come to pass in that day, it shall come to pass in the, in, in the day that the Lord shall give thee rest from thy sorrow 
and from thy fear and from the hard bondage wherein thou was made to serve. You see, now Volcan Malone said that this chapter was fulfilled in the Persian Empire. Now, after the Persians came, uh, came you had the Medio Persian Empire. Who came onto the scene? The Greeks. So was was this literally was this rest from our sorrow? Because we were able to rebuild the temple in the uh, 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 at the at the Persian Empire. No, that's not what that's talking about. This is a future prophecy of us getting full rest in the kingdom of heaven being set up, which is the throne of David. Okay, and from thy fear and from the hard bondage wherein I was made to serve. After the Greeks, you had the Romans. Judea was a province or a vassal to the Roman Empire. We weren't ruling then. There hasn't been a true government of the Israelites since Solomon's reign. <laughs> after that, particular men sat on the throne of David, but after Josiah, it was, that was it. Everybody was wicked, okay? It says... So when we do this, when we get the the the, uh, the uh, rest, what are we gonna do? We're gonna that thou shalt take up this proverb against the king of Babylon. Now we just read in Revelation the 18th chapter that when Babylon is destroyed, right? What are the pro apostles and prophets gonna do? They're going to rejoice because the Most High have avenged you on her, right? So what are we gonna do? Thou shalt take up this proverb against the king of Babylon. So there's the first clue. The king of Babylon is who this chapter is speaking of. Okay? And it's not speaking of uh, the ancient Babylon. All right? With Nebuchadnezzar, this is speaking of a future Babylon. Okay? And say, how hath the oppressor ceased, the golden city ceased. The Lord hath broken the staff of the wicked. And the scepter of the rulers, you see? So now you have king of Babylon, you have wicked, the staff of the wicked, the rulership of the wicked. Who's the wicked in the Holy Scriptures? The Edomites, okay? Malachi, the first chapter, basic scriptures. Esau is the wicked, okay? Now you have people that do wickedness, all right? But he is the wicked in the Holy Scriptures, all right? In the scepter of the rulers, his rulership is being broken. So the king of Babylon, who's who's called the wicked, okay, is being taken down, which causes the Israelites to rejoice, all right, from tears and from fear and hard bondage, which Esau is the final ruler. Okay, let's get that in Lamentations. Well, you Christians are something else, man. Lamentation 4 and 21. Rejoice and be glad, O daughter of Edom that dwelleth in the land of Uz. The cup shall also pass through unto thee, and thou shalt be drunken and shall make thyself naked. The punishment of thine iniquity is accomplished, O daughter of Zion. He will no more carry thee away into captivity. He will visit thine iniquity, O daughter of Edom. He will discover thy sins. So right here, you clearly see that the final captivity for the Israelites will be through Esau Edom, who controls the daughter of Babylon. Okay? Psalms 137. Psalms 137. Okay? In 7, remember, O Lord, the children of Edom in the day of Jerusalem, who said, race it, race it, even unto the foundation thereof. Because they wanted to completely decimate us. They helped the Babylonians in taking down our temple. Okay? And this is a future. At this time, David was, it was a future prophecy. Okay? Or whichever, uh, 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 you know, whoever wrote this psalm, it was a future prophecy of what was going to happen. This hadn't happened yet when this was written. Okay? Race it, race it, even to the foundation era. That was Edom's mindset. O daughter of Babylon, who ought to be destroyed, happy shall he be that rewarded thee as thou hast served us. So, O daughter of Babylon, who ought to be destroyed. So, Edom will pay through Babylon being destroyed. See? Happy shall he be 
that rewarded thee as thou hast served us. Happy shall he be that taketh and dasheth thy little ones against the stones. Now, and when Yahweh Shah returns, there's <laughs> going to be some gruesome uh, uh, judgments, all right, being laid out, okay? So now it's going to describe the king of Babylon, the wicked, and what he did on the earth. He who smote the people in wrath, Isaiah 14 and 6, with the continual stroke, Esau, he would rule with the sword, right? He that ruled the nations in anger is persecuted and none hinder it, all right? When he get taken down, okay, nobody's going to uh, 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 stand up for your ass. It's going to be well known that you were the devil. The whole earth is at rest and is quiet. They break forth into singing when your ass fall because it's your uh, uh, system and your your scepter that has everything dead, everything in a uh, discombobulated, languishing state. Your rulership is draining life out of the earth. Yea, the fir trees rejoice at thee, which a fir tree is what, what we know as a Christmas tree which uh, 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 in ancient Babylon and in modern Babylon are used for the purposes of idol worship. But they're very, very important to the ecosystem. There's various animals and species that rely on the fir tree when it's cold because it lives all throughout the uh, winter. But you cut them down for the purpose of idol worship. So even the fir trees are going to rejoice when your ass go away. And the cedars of Lebanon... OK, which that can be symbolic as people as well, because people are like unto trees saying, since thou art laid down, no feller has come up against us. Now, when you go to this word feller, it's giving you the characteristics of Esau Edom. <laughs> no feller. Now, the word for feller is karath, karath, to cut down, to cut off a body part, to cut out, to eliminate, to kill. Okay, to you, who cuts down the, 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 the trees at a rapid rate more than Esau eat them all throughout the, the, the ecosystem in the world? Huh? Who's hewing down and cutting down all of the trees? Who has a show on, the, uh, I forget what channel it was on. It used to be on Discovery Channel. Just going around the earth cutting down trees, man. Not keeping the laws. Now, there are particular trees you, you do cut down and you can, but there are particular trees you should leave up. But he doesn't take heed to any of that. He's, he's, he's created these wicked, all right, polluted cities and destroyed the earth, man. So when you fall down, even the trees are going to say no feller has come up against us. And this is just the earth rejoicing and able to do what it was supposed to do, able to bud forth. Hell from beneath is moved for thee to meet thee at thy coming. It stirreth up the dead for thee, even all the chief ones of the earth. It had raised up from their thrones all the kings of the nations, man. And this is what's happening right now, all right? But it's going to take an even greater, <laughs> all right, uh, 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 stance when, when, when war breaks out, man. All day, that it is, and it's aimed at Babylon the Great which is America, even other Edomite nations that are aligned with the beast system are going to be come up against your ass, although they're going to fall too. All they that are weak, let me, let me, let me start over. Verse 10, all they shall speak and say unto thee, art thou, art thou also become weak as we? Art thou become like unto us? So remember, this is speaking to the king of Babylon, the wicked, uh, uh, who, who had a scepter, which a scepter is synonymous with a rulership in the scriptures. All right. You mean you, 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 you smote. All right. We're going to have a scepter in the kingdom. It talks about that. It says thy pomp is brought down to the grave and the noise of thy vows. All right. Which is your vibration. OK. Uh, just like we have a new song. They have a song. All right. And their vibration and their song is evil. Anti-Messiah propaganda. The worm is spread under thee and the worms cover thee, meaning you're, you're going <laughs> to disintegrate. OK. 
then it just jumps to this. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer? But it's still speaking of the king of Babylon. It's still speaking of uh, 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 the wicked. Now it just calls him Lucifer. And this is the only time you see this word pop up in the Holy Scriptures. Yet all of this dogma and madness surrounds it. All of these fables surround it. Lucifer is just speaking of the, 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 the ones who would have the light in this Babylon the great man who would spread pseudo signs and lies and wickedness man how art thou fallen from heaven how art thou fallen from your rulership O Lucifer let's get Isaiah 47 <clears throat> lament for Babylon Isaiah 47 and 1 Come down and sit in the dust, O virgin daughter of Babylon. Sit on the ground. There is no throne, O daughter of the Chaldeans. See? The throne is gone. Esau is the end of the world. For thou shalt no more be called tender and delicate. Okay? And you can read throughout this the rest of this chapter. Okay? And what does it say? Behold, they shall be as stubble. Who's promised to be as stubble in the Holy Scriptures? The Edomites. OK, so this is nothing but Esau, Edom falling from his grace, falling from his glory, man. All right. Son of the morning, how are thou cut down to the ground, which did it weaken the nations and you weaken the nations, man. All right. For thou hast said in thine heart, which is your mind, I will ascend unto heaven. OK, <laughs> As a matter of fact. The article I planned on going into, but I just use it for this purpose. Why are billionaires fighting to be the first to go to space? <laughs> RT's boom bus wants to know. Okay. You got these billionaires talking about going to space. All right. In the in the sixties and seventies, late sixties in the in the into the seventies, they had their 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 uh you know, space uh, uh, escapades you can look that up and this is when they started to go downhill okay but even in these times they're talking about going to space which is the undoable talking about conquering mars and these they, they, these people are absolutely out of their mind but this is their mindset in rebellion against the heavenly father you cannot leave the earth because this is where your judgment is going to go down. But you think you can escape your judgment. That's why you have Jeff, Jeff Bezos and Elon Musk talking about leaving the earth. No. It's impossible. Okay? But these are the things that they're, they're talking about. So in this very day, we see this mindset. For thou hast said in thy mind, I will ascend unto heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. OK, and the stars of the most high are the Israelites. All right. However, he literally thinks he's going to go and he has talks of creating using his left hand blessing to escape the earth and set up shop on a whole nother, you know, bugging out, man. He's 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 off the chain, literally needs to be put on the chain. You see. I will ascend into that. Now, who else had this mindset in the Bible? Obadiah, verse 3, the pride of thine heart have deceived thee. Thou that dwelleth in the clefts of the rock, Esau, Edom, he's a caveman. That's why you think he puts concrete all over the planet Earth, because he is making the Earth into a big, gigantic cave, which is where he dwelt in those Caucasus mountains. That's why you get the, the term Caucasian. It says, whose habitation is high, who saith in his heart, who shall bring me down to the ground? Though thou exalt thyself as the eagle... All right, which is the highest flying bird. All right, any other bird who tries to get up to the altitude that an eagle fly, he'll fall out of the sky. So there's levels to this thing. So, but he, through his pseudoscience, okay, has exalted himself up as the top nation on the planet Earth. It's lies that has him up to that altitude. He's not where he is by a, a, a fair on a fair playing field. It's through ill-gotten gain, through pseudoscience, through rape, robbery, murder. 
suppressing and being the goddamn devil, man. Okay, but 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 in this pseudo sign, he has the highest IQ. He's this, he's that. So that's another way he exalts himself as the eagle, and he also takes the emblem of the eagle to himself. Okay, so did Hitler, so did uh uh uh, uh the Greeks, so did the Romans, so did the French, so did the Spanish, so did the British. In America today, uses the eagle, all right, as its uh its mascot. Let's <laughs> call it a mascot. Okay which is a sign that will be put on him for you in the spirit to see. So though thou exalt thyself as the eagle, and though thou set thy nest amongst the stars, your, your, your uh, satellites, okay, and all of these various different things you're doing, thence will I bring thee down, saith the Lord. Okay? So, so when he started to talk about his space escapades and all of these things, that will be the point all right, at which the Heavenly Father would send down the Holy Spirit and we would start to wake up. And that would uh, uh, be the start of his downfall, going back to like the 70s. Okay? And they've done all sorts of wickedness, sending animals. Look it up. Animals sent into space. Lizards, just to see how long they would live. This man is a complete demon. All right, then Elon Musk, his... uh uh. uh SpaceX program is called the Dragon, which we know the Dragon is going to fight, all right, against Michael and his angels, which that's Esau and his space force and all of the things he has, man. So this is the this, this is what we're reading in Obadiah, the fourth verse, is describing the same thing that this Lucifer, who's the king of Babylon and also known as the wicked, would do. So are you going to believe Christianity's played out breakdown that this is this is speaking of Satan being 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 evicted out of heaven? Get the hell out of here, man. This is a symbolic book. Like in 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 Revelation 12 it talks about a great red dragon, but it's clearly speaking of the Roman Empire. Was did a, a great a real literal great red dragon try to kill the Messiah when he was born? No, it was Herod, who was an Idumean. <laughs> All right. For thou hast said, Isaiah 14 and 13, for thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend unto the heavens. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also um, uh, upon the mount of the congregation in the size of the north, which is the Israelites. The Israelites is the congregation of the heavenly father. Okay, and him, him, him sitting upon them, because you had the the the, the whore that sit at the upon many waters. He's covering up who you really are. You're under his foot, right? I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High, and this is this man's mo. He has a God complex. Yet shall thou be brought down to hell and to the size of the pit. All right, so Satan, you go take Satan to hell. I thought Satan was already in hell. <laughs> hell is a is a, is gonna is a, is a uh, is a he's gonna be catching hell. As a matter of fact, one of my favorite scriptures to describe what hell is is hard times on earth. We in hell. All right, Isaiah five. Let's see here, Isaiah chapter five. Let's see here. One second. Isaiah 5 and 13. Therefore, my people are going into captivity, which you Edomites are going into captivity. But this is speaking of the Israelites because they have no knowledge and their honorable men are famished and their multitude dried up with thirst. Therefore, hell hath enlarged herself, all right, and opened her mouth without measure, meaning we're in hell. Hell is going to <laughs> spew out hellish things onto you and your nation. That's what happened to the Israelites. Hell enlarged herself and opened her mouth without measure in their glory and their multitude and their pomp, and he that rejoices shall descend into it, meaning all of the good times that you knew are going to be taken away. That's hell. 
That's what happened to the Israelites, and this is what's going to happen to the Edomites. Line upon line, precept upon precept clearly shows you this is not talking about the spiritual demon Satan. Now, the spiritual demon Satan controls, okay, the, the works of the Edomites to set up a hell on earth for the, the Israelites and to be anti-Messiah, Sodom and Egypt, right? And they, now let's keep reading, <laughs> because here's, this, this makes more, uh, uh, this, this cuts everything. They that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee and consider thee. So are the people going to be looking at Satan when he's kicked out of heaven? Okay. Saying, is this the man that made the earth to tremble and did it shake kingdoms? Is this the man? Okay. That did it make the earth to tremble. That did it shake kingdoms. As a matter of fact, when you get revelation, the 13th chapter, his technology and his pseudoscience and his, his blessing on the left-hand side. See, would do what? Deceive the people. Revelation 13 and 14. And deceive them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had a wound by the sword and did live, which was the ancient Roman Empire. But here's the point, verse 13, this is what I want. And he doeth great wonders so that he make it fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. Okay? And when did NATO first strike? Uh, uh, I believe in Bosnia. Okay? And from that point, people were like, oh, shit. These, these, these people are God. Nobody can stop these people. But as they get weakened and, 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 and fall in these latter days, these nations are going to consider them like, you you piece of shit. Is this the man that made the earth to tremble, that did shake kingdoms? And he would do that through the revival of the ancient Roman Empire, which is the NATO and the EU. And I was looking at an EU map, okay, and it's pretty much identical with the ancient Roman Empire. Then you add NATO and it's, 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 it's other nations, you know, Canada, Babylon, so 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 this man has been an absolute terror on the earth via the sword. He made the earth to tremble, bombing, you know, the, later on down the line from NATO being formed, Nagasaki, Hiroshima. And the list goes on and on and on, man. Starting false flag wars, using his news as a as a means of pushing propaganda to justify himself. So people, when he falls, people are going to be like, is this the man? Because these nations are all up in Esau's ass right now, right? But once he, he falls and is revealed for who he really is, they're going to be like, man, our, our, they're going to say that our, uh, our forefathers inherited lies, man. It's in Jeremiah 16. That made the world as a wilderness, created all of these cities, the Industrial Revolution, Okay. And destroyed the cities thereof that opened not the house of his prisoners. Babylon the Great is only, uh, I forget. There's only so much of the world population, all right, but it has the most prison population of the whole world, okay? And who's, who's mostly in those prisons? Israelites, okay? That made the world as a wilderness, okay? People are languishing which is a true uh, 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 illness, mental illness, <laughs> plaguing people in these latter days. And what does the scripture say in Isaiah 24? The haughty people of the earth do languish through Esau's rule, basically. All right? That open not the house of his prisoners. All the kings of the nations, even all of them lie in glory, everyone in his own house, because once the, you know, everything is done and the, the heathen serve their hardcore captivity, they're going to be able to go to where, you know, we place them, their lands, all right? And they're going to be able to enjoy family, enjoy a, a righteous rulership, all right? But when they go off, okay, and do things that we don't approve of, we, we will judge, all right? But you, Esau, but thou are cast out of thy grave like an abominable branch. You're not going to continue. You're going to be the only nation of the 18 nations 
All right, that 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 is absolutely wiped out. As the remnant of those that are slain thrust through with the sword that go down to the stones of the pit as a carcass trodden underfoot. Okay. Thou shall not be joined with them in burial because the heathen are going to be buried. None of their, their all of their rulerships are going to be buried. Right. So you're not going to be joined with them. Because even their burial is going to they're going to have glory from that because they're going to be way better off than they are in your kingdom. And they're going to be forced to follow the ways of righteousness. All right. But you're not going to be joined with the heathen nations after that a thousand year period, because thou hast destroyed thy land and slain the people. The seed of evildoers will never be renowned. So what are we going to do? Prepare slaughter for his children. So Satan has children. Okay. Yeah, he does. But but this is speaking of physical descendants. Prepare slaughter for his children for the iniquity of their fathers that they do not rise nor possess the land nor fill the face of the world with cities. Okay. Colonization. For I will rise up against them, saith the Lord of hosts, and will cut off from Babylon name <laughs> and remnant. And son and nephew, said the Lord. And what do all of these have in common? They produce seed. So there's going to be a point where no Edomite is on the earth. Okay? They won't be able to produce a nation. I will also make it a possession for the bitterns and the pools of water and will sweep it with the besom of destruction, said the Lord of hosts. Now, that ain't talking about ancient Babylon because that only fell to the Medes and the Persians, man. This is speaking of a future judgment, okay? And it's speaking of the ruler of Babylon, which is the king of Babylon, okay? Which when you type in king of Babylon in the scriptures, sometimes it's talking about the actual kings at Nebuchadnezzar, Okay, and the kings of Babylon at that time. But when you go into like prophecies like Jeremiah, okay, the 50th chapter, we'll get that. Jeremiah, the 50th chapter, you'll see king of Babylon. Sometimes it's talking about the future Babylon. All right. But when you go like to Jeremiah 50 and 43, the king of Babylon have heard the report of them and his hands wax feeble. Anguish took hold of him and and pains as of a woman in travail. And speaking of future prophecy of, uh, you know, in these latter days when he hear the prophets, you know, raising up. But anyway, you know, that that's pretty much it. You know, uh, you can watch this brother's video. Um, He breaks it down. He goes in as well. I don't think there was another point where he played it, but you could just see where, where this proud, <laughs> maybe a Benjamite preacher is going with it, and he's wrong, okay? But these Christians are now trying to address us and laying open folly and making fools of themselves, man. So that's the your question is answered. So whoever have ears to hear, let them hear. Shalom.